So with that, I will introduce our moderator, Crystal Shoji, and she will introduce our panelists and our candidates, and enjoy. Okay, we're going to start with um, just talking a little bit about this segment. We have four candidates instead of two, as you can see if you were here before, for the earlier part. And um, I'm going to number them as we go so that I can try to start different ones at different times with the questions so that the same ones aren't always getting the first question before uh, anybody else talks or anything like that. So um, the candidates are Matt Hamilton. He'll be number one. Matt Hamilton works for a contracting firm and has an associate certifi certificate in welding. He was appointed to the Coos, to the, I'm sorry, the North Bend City Council in 2023. Susanna Nordoff, number two, has a Bachelor of Science degree in Civil Engineering from Portland State University. She has been a North Bend City Councilor for nearly four years and has also served on the Gardner Sanitary District and the Gardner Fire District Boards. She moved here in 2005 to work for an engineering firm and plays percussion in the Bay Area Concert Band. Tim Slater, number three, served in the Army Guard and Reserves. He worked for many years as a land use manager for Weyerhaeuser. He has been a director of the Bay Area Chamber of Commerce and previously served on the Coos Bay North Bend Water Board, the Coos County Planning Commission, and the North Bend City Council as both mayor and counselor. Number four, Melinda Torres has a master's degree in public health from East Stroudsburg University and works in education with a focus on at-risk foster and houseless minors. This is the first time she has run for public office. We're glad we have four candidates for these positions. And how many uh, openings are there? Can you guys all tell me that? Three. Three openings out of four. OK, thank you. So um, let's start with the first question. And we're going to opening yes, statements. Yes, yes, I had to have that last time, too. <laughs> OK, reminder, opening statements from the candidates. And you have a couple minutes. Hi, I'm Matt Hamilton. I, uh, <clears throat> got involved with this, uh, was questioning the uh, homeless ordinance when that happened at the uh, the town hall at the, well, at the uh, community center, thank you. <laughs> um, I went there, I was just like every other citizen in the city, had questions about it, heard a bunch of things, and I'd go in there and find it out that um, Comments were going to be held the next night. Well, I didn't realize it at the time, but that was a city council meeting. So I come to the city council meeting and sat there and just paid attention and, and was interested in it. And it happened to be that the counselor at the time was giving his notice of resignation. And my wife said, you need to get involved in this. And we were kind of both talking about it and it would be a good thing. And I was kind of, uh, I didn't really understand a lot of the things like the URA and how things happen. And then once I got involved with this and the trainings that we, we are into, uh, talking with other counselors, the, the city employees, it gave a whole different outlook of what's going on and how and why things happen. So I've learned a lot since then. I've also uh, went online and obviously Facebook is a big new social media thing. And so now with the information that I have, I have contacted people on the internet that didn't understand how some of these things happened. And like the URA and stuff like that, uh, there was people that had a big problem with it. I met with these people privately and they discussed it. And after I've had a conversation and explained it, they actually went, wow, that is a great idea. So I'm, I like to bring information that I have and help other people understand. That's why you're electing a city council is for us to pay attention and do what's right so you don't, you know, you still do, but you don't have to be there every night. Thank you. Okay, next, um, Susanna Nordoff, number two. Uh, 
Um, good evening, everybody. I appreciate that the League of Women Voters has put together this forum. I think it's a great opportunity for both for us to under get the questions and for you to understand some of our background and where we're coming from. So I was elected four years ago. It's been a real interesting four years. The city has done a lot and, uh, and we're still moving forward. I think one of the big things that we did was to purchase the Coos County Courthouse Annex with urban renewal funding. And we got a bargain price on it because it had been surplus. So there's always a lot happening and a lot to pay attention to as a city councilor. Um, it's, it's different every single meeting, and I agree, we, we all serve as kind of diplomats to help the public understand why the city does X, Y, Z at any time. And, and that, I think, is a benefit both ways. So I try to do that to people in my circle and beyond. Um, I am, I, I will confess to being, I, I pay attention to the council rules and, and I try, we try to uphold the council rules. Um, the one thing that, that I find difficult is that we are not allowed to talk to staff, and the other thing is that we are not allowed to ask a substantive question of the city attorney. Those things are different from the legal Oregon City's model rules. In the legal Oregon City's model rules, you are allowed to talk to the staff. You don't you don't maximize that, but you get a little bit. You can you can communicate. And the other thing is that you can ask a substantive question of the city attorney, but it doesn't take more than two hours time. Here, we're not allowed to do that. Thank you. Uh, number three, candidate number three, Tim Slater. Hi, my name is Tim Slater. Happy to see you all here tonight. Uh, Got to tell you, I didn't grow up here, but uh, rolled into town in my new 1971 Pinto to be a tech forester with Weyerhaeuser back in the early 70s. And um, while I was a field forester for the first couple of years, I uh, then took a spot called uh, Land Use Supervisor, and that dealt with people, which I found was most interesting, whether they were neighbors, or governmental landowners, or agencies, or regulators, or whatever it happened to be, and you find out how to both create credibility and get things done going on that way. And it was while I was doing that in an estuary plan, I ran across the <coughs> North Bend uh, administrator, and we had we warehouser had uh, of course mill and property there, and I said, "Oh, I got a question for you." He said, "Oh." Is it about the city council vacancy? I said, no, tell me about that. <laughs> and so we did. And so I got appointed to the council at age 32. And I was the youngest person on the council for the next uh, decade, I think, it, as things went on. But what I found in that, we putting together goals and, and uh, focusing on team building and putting, putting things in order that way, our, our council's uh, created um, uh, the tourism TLT and uh, that did the uh, the joint tourism committee that you see today. We did capital improvements including the uh, runway extension, the new library, the senior center uh, and other uh, other things that way and I guess my baseline is now that I'm supposedly retired uh, I want to utilize that experience base and put people together and make things happen. Candidate number four, Melinda Torres. Hi everyone. Um, again, my name is Melinda Torres. Um, I just want to tell you just a little bit more about myself that since this is the first time I'm running for public office. Um, I'm proud to say I've been, I am, or I, I was born and raised in Coos County. Um, and after some, uh, and then maybe I should scoot over more. That's okay. And then after some time away, um, I became deeply involved. I mean, deeply involved uh, serving in my community. I feel like volunteering is the basis of what my foundation was growing up, and that is what um, my community really made that a president. Presidents. 
Um, much of my work has focused on supporting our houseless children and youth within our community, as well as advocating for our Hispanic community as well. While diversity is something we all value, I feel it's clear um, that our city council doesn't re reflect the range of perspectives in our community. Um, with no one on, on the board under the age of 35 right now, um, an entire generation is currently without representation. Well, I, and I feel that is huge. Um, and that's why part of the reason was I wanted to run to make sure that we are represented. And I'm overall, I'm committed to um, getting things done, following through with empathy and dedication and working as a team. Okay. Um, we have the questions like the council ones. They're not exactly the same, but I would like to start with you, Melinda, um, number four. So, you kind of shared some of this, but if there's anything else you want to expand on, it would be a good time. What motivated you to run for city council and what qualities and skills do you have that would benefit the council and residents of North Bend? Um, like, like I said before, I'm from this area. I deeply understand the importance of preserving our traditions while also addressing the needs of our evolving community. My extensive work with underprivileged youth and families have given me a strong sense of the challenges they face and the necessities, a voice that needs to be at the table. I've collaborated um, with my work and volunteering with a wide range of um, local organizations trying to, that has always been my focus, is how do we collaborate more? It's so much easier to get things done um, while not sh and sharing some of the workload with other organizations because it is daunting. Um, and I feel that that's something that's super important to me that I always try to make sure um, to share out. And... Um, My experience, and then also I have experience in writing, managing, and evaluating grants. And it's given me skills to work within budgets and different kind of funding streams that we can use as well. Um, and then I feel also ensuring our resources are used effectively. Um, and on, my ongoing commitment is to volunteerism to further demonstrate my dedication to my community. Thank you. Number one, Matt. Um, could you say what motivated you to run for council and what qualities and skills you have that would benefit? Uh, yeah, um, so I'm, I'm also not from here. I've been here since about 2010. Uh, I first came here for a project. Uh, I've worked all over the country, uh, across the ocean a few times, a lot in Canada, and I've seen different uh, economic areas and how these other places that I've been to with strong businesses and strong uh, communities and just the, the the growth that these cities can do in in the better living situations and so when I come here and I see empty buildings and I see potential businesses that have tried to come in and I want to see more economic development here uh, I actually held off, uh, I kept my job on the road for five years holding on for the Jordan Cove project because the company I worked for would have been a big player in building that. So I actually, uh, I got sick of waiting around, I couldn't wait to get to North Bend. So I came to North Bend and jumped into the fishing industry um, and got to know that industry really well and how that plays a part in our economics here. <clears throat> I then, um, got into the uh, construction industry around this area, and I deal with many different organizations, different um, entities, people, uh, businesses. Uh, I'm actually all over the place and talking to people on what, what could help bring more growth to this area and very dedicated to that. And also keeping the North Bend's tradition alive. I'm a small town guy, lived in small town my whole life. Uh, came here, uh, wanted to see the July Jubilee go again, got involved with that. We uh, called that a big success. We kicked off it first time since COVID, restarted that. Um, I work with the city as best I can to, you know, 
help ideas and come up and do what we can do. Number two, um, what do you see as the most urgent priorities for the city? Priorities, several. <laughs> okay. Um, I think housing has been, that's a concern, I think, for all of us on the council, because if we want to grow as a city and we want to have, have people moving in, as people retire, new people need to move in and take those jobs, but we have a housing shortage. And North Bend being ringed by the Bay and then Coos Bay on the south side, it makes it even more so of, a, of an issue because we don't have that much available ground where we can annex properties and, and bring that property into our city limits. Um, we, I think it will really help having a redeveloped Coos County courthouse annex because that will turn into, the plan is for um, multiple apartments upstairs that are rental properties. They are not, um, they are not homeless shelters, nothing like that. These will be nice, nice apartments for rent and that will allow people coming in to take a teaching job or a nursing job or anything like that. Uh, people not, not necessarily in the housing looking to buy a house right away, but needing a rental apartment that would offer roughly 70 to 90 apartments in, in that uh, structure once it's torn down and rebuilt. Commercial on the first floor, drive-in parking on the second floor, housing, housing, housing. And I toured it, and the view from the top is fabulous. So that is one concern. I'm also, I just learned that we, the city allows for 64 vacation rental houses after a business permit is acquired. I don't think it needs to be that high. Currently, we have 31 houses that are available, vacation rental by Omer, with a city business permit. And I think that 30, 30 in the 30s would be a good place to just kind of limit it rather than 60, 64. Thank you. Okay. Uh, number three, um, candidate three, Tim Slater. What do you see as the most urgent priorities for the city? Well, I think the most urgent priority for the city continues, and that's economic development and uh, creating that stable work and uh, force and environment. What what happened to us is when mills closed down, the group of people from 25 to 40 had to go elsewhere and they took all their kids with them. So that's been part of what the issue has been in schools as well. Uh, how do we address that? We've been looking at it a lot of ways to address that. Uh, I, I think you've seen the uh, growth of small entrepreneurs like um, Seven Devils and that, that focus. Uh, you've seen people which have come here that are able to use the uh, fiber in that and actually run their businesses that way. But, you know, we've striven to uh, come up with values and things in front of us. And the issues uh, have been such that uh, we always have potential. And, you know, after 40 years of potential to be an overnight success, I'm pretty tired of that. And I think the efforts that you see in the area need to come about and be able to get there. Now, the issues of homelessness, affordable housing and uh, child care, you know, and that are critical to the overall success that way. But we have task forces doing those things. I guess my issue would be, let's put those, let's bring them to action and make things happen that way. Um, a study, a report, or whatever is not a result. You know, if you're in business, it's getting something done. And what we knew is we need to be getting some of those things done to enable us to step forward with our economic focus and what's in front of us. Melinda, number four. Mm -hmm. What what do you see as the most urgent priorities for the city? Um, I think my top ones were um, infrastructure. I feel like we need a solid foundation for us to, I mean, a livable place for our future, for our current residents and for our future. Um, and another big one for me was our housing. And I feel like we're on a really great 
road right now and being creative with our housing solutions. And um, I can, I'm can i really excited to see uh, what we come up with now. Like we have our Banger School, um, the Annex, like we've talked about before. And then also we have more transitional housing coming up for our um, houseless families that really do need um, that additional support with getting their basic needs met, get on their feet so we can um, get them into stable housing to be contributing to our community as well. Um, and then overall, just another, um, what everyone else has been saying, we need to have those in place so we can have some more economic growth in our community um, if we want to start bringing in more revenue to um, start making some changes that we um, have for our goals and our visions. Thank you. Okay, we're going to start with um, Susanna, number two, on this question. Have you served on citizen advisory committees or task forces or community volunteerism that you would like to share? Let's see. Well, I, I guess I would look to being elected to the Gardner Sanitary Board, actually appointed because there was a recall that took out all five board directors back in 2016. Sorry, I'll start over. I was elected, I was appointed to the board of the Gardner Sanitary District in 2016 after the board, the entire board was recalled. And I was appointed by the um, county commissioners and I served there for five and a half years, long enough to uh, deal with a, uh, a contract to put a new wastewater force main under the Umpqua River. And that, that force main, there were four change orders and it almost went to litigation. And attorneys were involved. And it wasn't a pleasant experience, but now we have a force main. And um, I also was elected to the Gardner Fire Board. And um, my tenure there overlapped with my tenure on the sanitary district. And that's when Jordan Cove was giving out a lot of grant money. I got them grant funding. I wrote the grant application and it was funded. And um, that got us new electrical additions and corrections to the, to the fire station. And um, also I wrote a grant that got them an automatic garage door opener because there were women on the fire district, on the, on the fire team, and they could not, they were beaten up the rails when they were trying to open the garage door. So now it's automatic. So that was, that was before I was asked to run for this seat here to support a mayoral ca candidate, James Rose, who did not win, but I won, and it's, it's been, I've learned a lot. It's been a good experience. Thank you. Thank you. Number three, Tim Slater. Uh, okay, could, what's your question? Could you share uh, citizen advisory committees, task forces, or community committees that you have volunteered for? Well, I, I guess there's a few um, statewide uh, DEQ non-point source um, pollution committee that was writing the rules for that. And uh, the clean air issues dealing with smoke and so forth. I was part of a, a committee which, uh, which uh, put those regs together on that set. Um, I was part of the interagency estuary task force group here which uh, was an interesting process that we went through and created this whole estuary plan with all the little segments that are changing out at, uh, at this point. Um, I was also part of a blue ribbon committee that uh, Mayor Berger put together uh, that created uh, uh, SEDC as that was. I was part of uh, in 2011 the Coos County Structure Committee which actually went through and analyzed uh, all the uh, aspects of what was going on in Coos County and you know, by interviewing people and putting things together that way. So, excuse me. So I, uh, I like committees that get in and do things and uh, I've been part of many and I really think, you know, in, in cities, that's the thing. Let's put together active 
working committees and use all the talents that are around you and the talents of the people that are there and build those folk up and let them shine and we get great results. Thank you. Number four, is, um, Melinda, have you served on citizen task forces or advisory committees for the city or for volunteer projects that you've worked on? Um, yes, I. Um, like I've said before, I think I, throughout my life, volunteering has always been important to me and I'm more, when it comes to my volunteering, on the ground. I want to like participate in whatever I'm doing. Um, so one of the things that I'm on is the Oregon Community Foundation South Coast Leadership Group, where um, we focus on, right now, we're focusing on um, dental hygiene for our children and youth within Coos and Curry counties, which is really exciting because, I mean, I work in schools and I get to see all the children and there is a huge need. And it's been really impactful trying to make a positive change and making sure that they get um, their needs met when it comes to that. And then also um, I've been participating on the homeless task force we have here locally, which has been really great to um, collaborate and just talk to um, different agencies ranging from businesses, hospital, and even other agencies that um, focus on our houseless um, children, youth, and adult programs. And then um, another one I'm volunteer on is Coos Hispanic Alliance. Um, we also plug in, we have our uh, moving tomorrow night for um, Hispanic Heritage Month, which I'm really proud of. Uh, and the goal is that we always try to advocate and help our um, Hispanic community, especially ranging from our children um, to their parents. And then the last one that I'm the most proud of, uh, I'm, uh, I serve on the Banded Community Youth Center Board for the last seven years. It's somewhere where I volunteered when I was in school and I came back. And just that program has really grown and met the community's needs and I'm just really proud of that program. And Matt, back to you. Um, have you served on task forces, task forces or advisory committees or volunteer um, for the community? Uh, well, recently was, as I had said earlier, the, uh, it was a special events committee that we helped put together the July Jubilee, which actually took a lot of time and I learned a whole bunch about putting on a festival and it's way more than I had anticipated, but uh, it actually was uh, a good experience. Uh, met some really nice people and enjoyed that. Uh, I'm also on the board of the Bay Area Sportsmen's. Uh, area, Bay Area Sportsmen's. Uh, we uh, do a big fundraiser every year, and we give money out that stays in the community between as far as hours and read sport. Everywhere in between there, we. Uh, Recently, uh, gave the city money for uh, doing the dock on uh, California Street. So that's been uh, an adventure. Uh, being a part of that, I'm also part of a subcommittee on that um, for their banquet. Um, I was younger. I served on the. Uh, it was a uh, fire department. Uh, we got an explorer program going, which I was also a part of, and also helped start and continued with for four years, which was a good experience too. Um, I'm always up for uh, helping out wherever I can. Uh, a lot of these things that we do here in the community, uh, I end up going to talk with towns and, and anything the city puts on, I, uh, I'm there volunteering or doing whatever needs to be done. So that's all I got. Thank you. Okay, uh, starting with you, okay. Mr. Slater, number three. Um, what experience do you have with managing budgets? Well, what experience do I have? Um, if we look in the governmental side of things, I've been part of uh, a shade over 30 North Bend budgets over the years. I've been on the uh, uh, Southwestern Oregon Community College budget group for 20 years. And in uh, business, uh, my portion of warehouse that I had, uh, of course, we had uh, those monies, the monies we were creating and the monies that uh, we were given. And uh, 
that was a constant focus to make sure that uh, not only were you achieving the ends that you wanted to achieve, but you were actually uh, spending the uh, funds and creating the funds um, that were needed to make all those things happen. So I had, had those pieces, there's been, um, you know, whatever clubs you want to be in the Chamber of Commerce, uh, we have a very tight budget in that regard and uh, finding ways to create money and put those things together and also then watching that budget and making those things uh, work. I mean, there were many years that I was allocated a, a salary increase, but I didn't take the salary increase because I was concerned about funding the organization and making sure that those things fit together that way. So. Um, Budgets are interesting things. They're always a challenge. It's our best guess. We do the best job with it. I have to say, if I can sneak it in in that, by 1984, the city here was at a carryover of 50,000 bucks. And we went on that. Uh, all the non-salaries took uh, a freeze and we went to the unions and all the unions agreed to the freeze. So it was working together and got us through with only that amount of money. Number four, Melinda, could you share um, how you have worked, the experience you have with managing, managing budgets? Yeah. So um, for my job within the school district, I oversee the ARC project. And with any of the um, grants that are coming in, I'm solely in charge of making sure that um, our budget is spent and we follow the grant that we applied for to the, um, to the, to the T. And then also um, within like um, the Bandon Youth Center and then also the hospital board in Bandon as well, um, making sure that we're, make, we're making sure that um, our, our grants that we have, our programs that we have are um, followed through because you have to report on those things and making sure that we don't get dinged for anything is really huge and asking tons of questions. I feel like with budgets and anything with finance, it's always, you're always learning all the time. And that's the major thing with me is I'm not afraid to ask questions if I don't understand something. And especially with um, trying to be on the city council, that is something that um, is, I feel is really important is to ask those questions, especially with finances. Matt, number one, um, could you tell us your experience with budgets? Uh, well, uh, recently, we just uh, went over the budget for 2025 for North Bend, which was approved, and very little changes to that, which was kind of an experience going through that. Um, I was a superintendent for 20 years and traveled all over the United States, Canada, and across the seas, and, and uh, we would start a job, and you would get your... Uh, the cost of the job, what you had to spend, all the variables that went along with the project. And uh, so I keep track of it daily uh, and give reports every week. Um, I, at the time when I worked for the company, I had the biggest project ever awarded to a superintendent up in Canada. And uh, my third job with the company, the first two or three years I was with them, I think I still hold the record for the biggest percent on the job which I was happy because uh, here coming in as a young guy and paying attention and keeping morale high with your, your uh, co-workers, which were your employees, but uh, coming up with ways to save money and get the project done on time uh, was pretty uh, pretty a, a feat at the time and uh, I actually got drug into the CEO, CFO and the two owners and, and I got told I needed to meet with them and I was kind of shocked because I was getting drug in and I'm like, what did I do wrong? And they sat me down and they said, how'd you make this? And so I explained my, uh, my goals and how I, how I delegated things. And it's no different when working with the city. And what we're doing here is, you know, we, we know what it's cost. And we need to figure out how to get there and cut corner here and spend here. And so and it's a collaborative effort between the whole team. So I'm used to working with teams and uh, in give and take. Thank you. And again, um, back to you, Susanna, okay. about how you've managed budgets and worked with budgets. Okay, budgets. 
first want to mention, I forgot, I was on the Parks Board for four years and took the minutes, the, the North Bend Parks Board. Okay. So budgets, um, I've been through four budget cycles at this point with the City of North Bend. I think that we, we have terrific staff here and, and I, I have to compliment our, Jeff Bridgens is our finance director and he does a fabulous job. He's a CPA. He has that credential and he's been here several years now and I have a lot of confidence in his numbers and the only thing that I would change about the budget process is that I'm, I'm not in favor of having the first meeting and then the second meeting back to back. Most jurisdictions take like a week or two between their budget committee meetings. That's the only improvement that I or change that I would make. Um, I helped with the Gardner Sanitary bus, bu Budget for five years, and that was tricky because they had taken a loan from DEQ and um, for two hundred and fifteen thousand dollars to do a study, and had to pay it back with like twenty-five or thirty percent interest, and that's why people were really frustrated that their sewer rates were really high. And I think they're right now just about ready to pay that off. And we will, of course, we are, we are putting forward a fee increase on the uh, November ballot for the city. And that is money that, that should have been, the, the rates have been kind of artificially kept low for a long period of time. And now it's time to pay the piper. We have, we are among the lowest rates in the state for wastewater. And that needs to change or it's not going to work because our system is so old. It's about 70 years old. Um, and that's about 40% of our system is 70 years old. So, okay. okay. Back to you, number four. Melinda, could you um, tell how you would recruit people to serve on your city committees if you are on the council? Yes. I think a big thing is um, social media. Um, I think would, that's where I would start is social media and then um, have like um, Jessica does, something that we could recruit for myself. I would, I focus a lot on youth and I feel like that they need a voice at the table as well in meeting them where they're at and getting these groups together and talking to them about how they can get involved um, within the city and get them interested and maybe pursue it like this could be an eye-opener that this is something that they're interested in and also um, meeting them where they're at having those conversations um, informal ones and giving them the opportunity for a meetup or anything like that and then I think the biggest push for me would be different types of social media to try to get a wide variety of um, individuals okay back to number one Matt how would you get help recruit people to uh, city committees, to serve on city committees? Uh, again, jail on what she said, um, yeah, social media obviously is, is a really good way to get out there. But another good way I feel too is to go out in your community and talk to people, go to these events. Uh, the people that want to get involved, you see them a lot. You'll see them at city functions. You'll see them come to city council meetings. Those are the people that really have a heart in it. Those are the ones that I would go talk to first. Uh, after that, you know, uh, you go to the local businesses, you just, you end up, you know, if you're a small town person here and you just, you know, you know the people in your community. I, I, it was like, uh, you know, getting our signatures to be able to even get our names in the ballots. At first I thought 50 signatures, you nuts? Like, I don't, you know, pretty soon it's like, I don't think people in North Bend, I live here. You know, so you just, you know people in your community, you know the people that want to get involved. Some people need a little bit more uh, persuading, but uh, I mean, that's who we are in North Bend, is uh, we're a community. We know our people, we know who wants to get involved and who will step up to the plate to get things done. And we look to uh, certain individuals a lot of times, I don't want to say no names, but there's people out there that we depend on dearly as counselors and as city employees to help step up to the plate and fill these positions. Um, those are the people that I want, those are the people that I talk to, and they also will give me names of other people that they know that want to get involved. So that's how I would do it. Thank you. Susanna, 
How would you uh, recruit people? I would recruit people by using the committees that you have. The Parks Committee used to be a board, now it's a committee, has not met since October of 2021. And my neighbor in back, I encouraged him to join that committee. He received an, a, an, a certificate of appreciation for being on the committee. He has never been invited to a meeting, never. There are three people on, currently on that committee. They have not had a meeting. He was not even invited to be on the master plan steering committee for the 20 year upgrade to the parks master plan, which is a portion of the city comprehensive plan required by state law. The upgrade will, the update planning out the next 20 years will receive a public hearing in front of the planning commission and a vote by the planning commission to refer it to city council, another public hearing and another vote. And so my take on using your, or encouraging people to be on committees is to use and respect the people who have already volunteered to be on a committee. And if you can't do that, what's the point? Tim, uh, how would you how would you recruit people to serve on city committees? Well, it's interesting. I have the same approach that Matt does. I, I mean, I, it's great to get the information out social media wise, and that'll connect with a lot of different folk. But I think the person to person contacts, the uh, chatting, and as you were out getting signatures, I did the same thing. I had some long conversations with folks. And realistically, I think that's an important part, the eyeball to eyeball and the consistency, you know, what are you interested in? What's going on? And how can I marry you up with something that's there? And the other one that I would do is, is get all the city council involved, but uh, let's tell our story, not just simply in facts and figures, but let's get out to different speaking and whatever engagements, time, you know, simple things from big to small, and we can talk about what's going on in the city and create an interest in how you can make a difference and it's your talents that are important to us and, and we'd like you to be part of that. So I think, to me, the person-to-person -person is the significant element that we could add to uh, make sure that uh, people understand and why it's significant, why it's interesting, and come on and be part of that. So I think we have time for one more question, unless we have some really good ones that uh, have come from the audience. I'd get those up here. Uh, this question will start with Matt. Uh, what is your view of the Main Street program? I really actually like the Main Street program. Uh, their big thing is the sip and stroll. That's what everybody sees, because who doesn't like that? But they, they're also into all the business development downtown, helping organizations uh, in town. There's OBAB, they work with them, they have them downtown, uh, cleaning up before the, uh, the Jubilee kickoff. Um, uh, they meet, they, they help with bringing people into North Bend to spend their money in our community. That's what we want. We want people in our community spending money being here enjoying the community um you know that was that was part of uh, the ura and the chicarelli's building i mean you know you you go downtown and you see an empty building well that doesn't look very good but you can go down a lot of towns in america and see empty buildings go downtown to north bend and what do you see there's stuff happening in every building uh, i don't i there's one empty one right now but i know it's getting renovated because it's getting ready for somebody else to go into. So North Bend's downtown has helped uh, keep, keep it vibrant, keep it going. And uh, I mean, just go to a sip and stroll and see how many people show up because if you don't come early, you're standing in line for a long time. So we appreciate the North Bend uh, downtown. <coughs> uh, <three seconds>. um, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Yeah, there's just so many things that come to my mind with uh, with the downtown, 
and uh, you know the new murals and stuff that is on the buildings when you come in. Uh, and, and I know it's not downtown, but anybody in the community loves to see that North Bend sign leaving on vacation or coming home, even at work. When you see that sign, you know you're home, and it's all part of our community and the downtown. So I appreciate that. Thanks. Susanna, what is your view of the Main Street program? Well, I, I think it's a really good thing. We, I had done a small consulting job on an urban renewal feasibility study, study, study in Port Orford. And Port Orford, this is like in 2010, and Port Orford had a Main Street that was doing, going gangbusters. I'm like, well, why doesn't North Bend have that? And then Reedsport's had a Main Street for a decade or two, and, and that old town is just beautiful. And there, there are renovating buildings and getting more of them occupied, and it looks really interesting. And it is, it's kind of a fun place to wander around. So I'm pretty thrilled with our Main Street. I've been a supporter of urban renewal uh, for quite a while, and um, I found that I think that Bill, Bill Richardson and I, I think, had the discussion and took the lead on turning, turning that vacant uh, parking lot that came with the Coos County building annex. We got two parking lots that came along with that purchase from the county. And the one has turned into the skating rink. It's, it's a synthetic ice. And they were smart. They decided that it was tricky enough to put together that just cover it up with plywood and hold bands, you know, have bands in and that kind of thing. So it's worked pretty well, I think. It's a skating rink in the wintertime that provides people something to do when they come down to see the lights at Shore Acres. They have a venue, somewhere to go during the day and that will entertain them. And um, so urban renewal and Main Street kind of cross over. They're two separate budgets. And urban renewal has, the, they're the folks that do the, the murals and the acquisition of property. And the Ciccarelli's building had serious, serious structural issues with it. It would not have attracted a buyer to go in and do the renovations because they would have spent their whole budget just bringing the building up to, up to snow. So urban renewal. Hand-in-hand. Okay, Tim, the question is, uh, what is your view of the Main Street program? Well, I think the Main Street program, as it's being presented and lived in North Bend, is excellent, you know, from that recall. We see several that go on for a while and then peter out into a shell of what they could be. But what you've seen is a lot of active activity downtown things you mentioned the murals and that stuff the uh, skating rinks and so forth um, it's created a positive atmosphere among the businesses there and every so often you see a group of business folk independent of that put together something and a special sale and stuff going on that way so i think it's a uh, it's been a real shot in the arm for our area. We uh, our people that are on that board and that have dedicated a whole lot of time and energy to it, and it's evident that it works well. I guess from my focus, I'd like to take that spirit of Main Street and expand it to the other businesses that are not in Main Street and uh, continue to uh, generate and enhance small business throughout uh, North Bend and uh, come up with probably a business association somewhere down the line. But I think this is a real key and it's good to uh, do things well and then point at it. Okay, well you see what they did? That's what we could do over there. And uh, that inertia motion is important. Melinda, what is your view of the Main Street program? I just really like it so much. Um, it's just like everyone has been saying up here, it's just so lively. It's just a positive atmosphere. It brings people together. Um, and there's activity for all ages. There's always something for whatever age to do. Um, and then what I've been seeing more is becoming annual events that we're having. People are liking it, so we're bringing it back year after year. And to me, that's so important. And the ki especially the kids, they're loving it. And they're so excited to go to these events and then there's um, events like we've talked about for adults as well 
So just tar I mean, making sure that we target all ages. And I don't, I'm just really excited to see what happens next with that. Okay, are there any questions that um, you were expecting me to cover? Just the one I brought. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> this, is, this is a big one for short question. Um, so I guess I'll see if first is there somebody here that would like to um, answer with respect to potential impacts and benefits of the development of a major container port in Coos Bay and if other um, candidates want to talk about that, um, we will do a go around on that. Sorry. Um, sure. I would like to speak to it. Yes. Possibly. Okay. Start. Um, I think there's been a lot of positive press about it. I think that we also need to be mindful. I had a discussion on this at the 50th anniversary of the South Sioux National Estuary, and we were the first in the country, and now there are 30. So we were the first. The party was last Saturday, and I had a discussion with Mike Graybill. And, um, a few other people, and ships come in. And if you look at the harbor in San, San Francisco, ships come in, they offload their cargo, and they sit there until they get another order to go pick up cargo. And they sit there. They don't, they don't leave, and we do not. So how's that going to work? Because we do not have a really big harbor like San Francisco, but the ships are going to sit here until they get another order, and then they take off and go. The other thing that I'm concerned about is if it's going to be an all-electric port, we are at the end of the power grid, and we have voltage drops that are noticeable and rec electronic equipment. So where exactly is all the power going to come from? And I asked Katty McCune this about three years ago because she made a presentation and, you know, she, oh, I'll get back to you. Or she, she, she noted the question. She noted that she didn't have a response to that. I still have not heard a response to that. And I think it's significant. Thank you. And you wanted to speak? Yeah. Um, as mentioned, we, we've done a whole variety of things as we look to utilize the uh, marine industrial areas out on the North Spit. Now, I have to mention that uh, I actually had all the permits, warehouse or wise, for an oil rig fabrication site out there. And, uh, and then a lessee backed out. Uh, a lot of very creative things went on. But that, uh, that's a, agreed to in our comp plans as the spot where, okay, let's produce industry out there, let's produce or manufacturing out there. And there's been a lot of proposals. You're aware of all these different proposals. Here is one that fits well, fits well with the railroad, fits well with uh, the uniqueness of our port being that close to the open ocean. And it's not designed to become Long Beach or Tacoma. It's a additional uh, op option for the containerized people uh, to be able to um, uh, offload materials there, plus you start to create a market coming out from the agricultural products from Eastern Oregon and that. Uh, so far as the volume of shipping, it'll be less than when we were sending our lumber out and all the other things that we had back in the 60s and 70s. Um, so it's a uh, it's a time which has come. It's a unique opportunity. I think it serves the nation well. I think it serves us well and would fit very well in the overall area of the Bay. Melinda, would you like to comment on that? Um, yes. I think with this, there, there are a lot of layers to this. And there still are questions that we have to see if this is really going to work. But in the end, we need to bring something here, economic development. I think I always um, think about what's happened in the last couple of years, especially with COVID, 
We've had to shut down Shutter Creek. We've lost a ton of jobs. People had to move. Kids had to go to different schools. And then also um, Coos, Coos Bay, Georgia Pacific Mill shut down. And that was astronomical to our area. And coming from a school perspective, it was really hard on a lot of our kids, not knowing um, how their parents were going to pay the bills. And I think we need to really, I mean, like I've said before, there's a lot of layers, but we need to get out of our comfort zone and to see what else we, that, Coos, that North Bend has potential to bring to our area for growth. <clears throat> Matt? So uh, me not being from Oregon, I'm actually uh, kind of a history buff, and uh, that that kind of stuff, the the history of North Bend, Coos Bay area actually is a big thing for me, and I actually uh, know a lot more history about the area than a lot of the residents that have been lifelong here, and everybody knows that this port was the biggest shipping port of wood uh, at a time, uh, 70, 60s, 70s, 80s, I mean, if you've got a, a chunk of wood, it, pretty much came out of Coos Bay, Oregon, or North Bend, Oregon. Um, and so a lot of people forget the, how many mills were in this area, how much production of lumber and the amount of people that actually worked here. And then once the lumber industry took its hit, and, uh, many different things has slowed it down and, and uh, places have pulled out for different reasons. And so now we're stuck with just a couple small mills. Uh, the area, we don't have a lot for agriculture. I mean, anybody, if anybody can find some flat land around here, uh, you're a millionaire. So we have our we have what we have left for our logging industry. We have our fishing industry. We have some tourism of an industry here. But the biggest thing we have is this bay. Now, granted, we have to look at the uh, economic and uh, uh, wildlife impacts to the shipping of. Uh, building this and the ships coming in but it's also a good opportunity for us to have some good paying jobs come to town and uh, it, it would bring some opportunities to our area and Oregon um, it, it, a lot of people don't want to see growth in a small town but you know we need to do something to to gain some jobs here and that would be a big create of some good jobs and a lot of jobs uh, if it works out with all the other layers that we need to get through to make it happen, if it's feasible. So I'm, that's where I'm at. Okay, uh, we've come to the end and uh, it's time for closing statements from the candidates. Um, pretty short, one minute or less. So um, would you like to start, Mr. Slater? <laughs> sure, I guess so. I'm in a unique situation where I'm technically retired, which now means I have that section of job over here which is not occupying my time, and I love what goes on within the city and that, and decide there's a good opportunity to focus in on some things that maybe we haven't had time for. The pool levy, I know it's coming up, I want to help guide that through and, and put it together as to what we can do in the future on it. We talked about expanding Main Street a bit, not necessarily as Main Street, but as um, uh, that type of thing in business and the economic development that we have coming on immediately in front of us. And if I can be real quick, a couple of things we've got, respect people, be decisive in what happens, have goals and work the goals, don't be afraid of hard work and make it happen. And the last little bit is be a servant leader. Melinda? I think overall, um, I have passion for this community, and that's why I wanted to run for city council. Um, I think my focuses are on um, thoughtful decision making, goal orientation. Um, and ensure that um, North Bend's future reflects the needs of its residents of all ages. Um, I'm committed to working hard, listening to every voice, and in making informed, de informed decisions. Um, and I feel like together we can build a better North Bend.
Matt? Yeah, uh, so to re reiterate a little bit, um, I was appointed uh, when I found out about the opening. I came to every council meeting, and uh, so when I was talking with the council, I reiterated that I've been to 18 straight city council meetings. And so once I was appointed, one of the gentlemen on the, on the council looked at me and said, just remember, you asked for this. <laughs> and boy, was he right. But um, I really enjoyed it, and I really uh, came to appreciate what happens in city government, our, uh, how things get done, and, you know, an old guy that I worked for once told me, plan your work, work your plan. And I've stuck with that my whole life, and it's worked out. And so when I look at the council's goals, that's the plan. And we're here to work the plan. So that's what we do. That's what I want to do. And carry the city forward uh, with the best decisions and the best things we can make happen with our resources we have. So thank you. Susanna? <laughs> um, I, I feel the same way, and I guess one thing that I have done, maybe that's different than what everybody else has done, is that I actually use the ability to put something, a topic, on the work session agenda for discussion. And sometimes it's, mostly it's just been discussion and it doesn't move forward, but I have brought things to the table for discussion. And it's been a pretty big list over four years. Amend the livestock and fowl ordinance because right now it's you can have any type of animal, any number of animals, and the only restriction is that they can't run the city streets. So when your neighbor brings in 20 chickens and lets them roam around the backyard, the raccoons come in, the rats come in, and you're breathing because there's no grass left in that yard, you are breathing a barnyard. But nobody saw the value in changing that rule. And that's been kind of my experience being on city council. Ideas, unless they are on the plan right there, it doesn't happen. And, and that kind of makes me sad. Thank you. We uh, have some thank yous tonight. Uh, first, uh, the League of Women Voters has put this together. I'm very impressed with the way they do this and the uh, way they lay it out and appreciate being able to be part of it. We want to thank all the candidates, the mayor candidates, the city council candidates, very thoughtful, uh, sincere people, and we appreciate it. Let's give everybody a hand. <laughs> and unless the president wants to say something, well, we'd like to thank the moderator very much. Thank you. And the audience. You've been a good audience, and we appreciate you being here.